I'm very thrilled today to have our member, Pierre Laporte from Quebec City, Quebec, uh, here with us. Uh, Pierre is retired from the Canadian Wildlife Services as a biologist, and he has lots of hobbies and interests. He just showed me his frog and his spider, <laughs> and he... Um, he catches solar flare. I mean, he monitors solar flares and he just has lots of really interesting um, interests and hobbies. And one of them has been to do a geneal genealogical research tracing where hemochromatosis came from uh, to Quebec. So um, he's had a lot of inputs from a lot of families um, from Quebec that have been part of his research. And I know that he invites anyone who wants to participate um, to contact him. And so if at the end you're interested in sharing some of your information, we just invite you to reach out to me and then I, I will connect you with Pierre. So, um, um, Pierre, we just welcome you here today. We thank you so much for sharing uh, your life work, really. And um, we invite you to um, to take it away. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, last spring, I made that presentation uh, to the Canadian Hemochromatosis Society in French. And uh, I know that they receive few requests to have it in English. So uh, with the help of who, uh, the help of Liz, I had my presentation uh, translate. I modify it a little bit to take in account more new information that I have. So you are, uh, you will be up to date tonight with my project. Uh, so I will share my screen. It's okay? Perfect. Okay. So uh, I will uh, talk tonight about uh, the plan of my presentation. I will uh, give you few uh, few uh, history of this project. I will talk about uh, what principle and methodology that I use uh, for the understanding of uh, my research. Uh, I will present you few notion about the genomic of the mutation, the mutation of the... Uh, okay. Um, uh, about the, the genomic of, uh, of the mutation, which is uh, responsible for the hereditary uh, hemochromatosis. And uh, I will describe two approach that I use to find out uh, what I'm looking for, uh, a genealogical approach and a DNA approach. Uh, what I am looking for, uh, I am looking for uh, which ancestor that come here in the new world, who could bring the mutation here in, uh, I would say in Canada, but most, much more in the new world. And finally, I will give you some preliminary result, but uh, as you see uh, quite often when you go through internet, it's a work in progress. So the history, uh, I've, I've been diagnosed diagnostic with the uh, hereditary hemochromatose in 2000. And at that time when I met the gastroenterologist, he told me, okay, now you should uh, inform your, your children, your, uh, your, uh, your sister, your uh, brother, 
and uh, everybody connected uh, to you about that diseases because it is uh, a genetic disease. And uh, so I forgot my parents because uh, the, at that time, the live, the die at uh, 96 for my father and 93 for my mother. So if they had the guest, uh, the specialist told me, okay, uh, forget it because What's going on, Liz? Uh, I've been mute. Okay. Did you hear me now? Yes, okay, sorry, there was a glitch. It seemed like you were also in the waiting room. Me? Twice, yeah, but okay. I, I heard no interruption to Pierre's, uh, um, oh. what he was talking. I heard everything, so just oh, for reference. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. And I'm okay. on, Liz, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. There was a brief break in the audio from Pierre, for me. Okay. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. Sorry, we'll get everyone to be muted except for Pierre and we'll keep going. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, oh, yeah. as I have just one brother, um, uh, so you have to, to uh, you have been tested, and he find we find that he also got the the diseases, and uh, uh, his wife, my sister-in-law, was very curious because they have four children, and she was curious to know if it could have transmitted to one of their children. So uh, when the result come, it's come that she was a carrier of the mutation. So uh, at that time, I was, I was uh, interested in genealogy. I made my own family tree. I, had, uh, I have a family tree from my sister-in-law too. So I'm question, I ask myself the question, so, if we are a common ancestor together, maybe it's that person who, who is responsible for the transmission of uh, that uh, mutation. So I discussed this project with my doctor. I have some few uh, personal contact and with the help of the General Cal Society, of Quebec, where uh, I am member, uh, I, with the time, I got a sample of people who had the hemochromatosis, and they are willing to. Uh, yes, I'm on. To be part, uh, to be part of the um, okay. of this project, and. What is uh, it's mean as uh, Liz told uh, you that I have a lot of hobbies and uh, I have expertise in three field uh, of uh, that I am interesting in and it's uh, whoops first of all uh, the molecular biology by the way I just I was looking at that time to make. Uh, uh, a specialty in that, but uh, the thing changed and I made a specialty in bird. So uh, also the other field that I am very interested in the phylogenetic. The, uh, what is the phylogenetic? The phylogenetic is uh, a branch of the biology who study the uh, evolution of uh, the evolution tree of uh, living organisms. And the third one is the genealogy. So it's where that project began, uh, I would say 20 years ago. So uh, I will explain a little bit uh, what uh, a few information that uh, probably need to a better 
understanding of the uh, remaining of the presentation. Every living organisms like human are, are constituted with a cell. Oops, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, back up. Okay, with a uh, cell. Well, well. Ah. A cell, uh, each cell, almost each cell of uh, the, the human body uh, had uh, have, um, a nucleus where all our genome is uh, stored. Our genome is stored in the form, uh, in a chromosome that we have. The chromosome come in pair, one pair come from the mother, the other pair from the father. And a chromosome, what is it? It's a, a very long molecule of DNA. And the DNA is look like a, a twist later with stair, which are the stair are made of a, a molecule that we call bases. And there are four kinds of bases which can, are used to make up the DNA. It's, uh, we call that uh, adenine, timine, uh, guanine, cytosine, but uh, it's shorter to have the capital letter of each. And the property of those bases is that the, um, the A is always joined to a T as we see here, and the C is all the way joined to a G. And the long string of DNA constitute all the insertion to make the cell working. The main constitution of the, uh, of the uh, cell are a protein. A uh, protein, it's again, a long string, less than the DNA, but uh, it's a, a string of a, a product that we call amino acid. And uh, the human body use 21 amino acid and uh, the, amino, the string of amino acid, which is where the instruction are located in DNA, are used by uh, the cell to make up another string of amino acid uh, to make a protein. And the property, the protein, that string is fold on himself. Uh, and the, you could have more, you, here you have one, two, three protein, which are joined together to make a super, what we could call that a super protein. And all that, those structure make up the living cells the living cells are joined together to make a kind of uh, tissue, which is spe uh, a special tissue like muscle, um, uh, air, your, uh, your liver, for example, it's a, a kind of uh, tissue. So if we look at the phylogen, uh, no, I'm, Yes. Uh, okay, the phylogenetic. Uh, the phylogenetic is, this, as I told you, it's a study of uh, the the living tree of organisms. Here I show you a a living tree of the primate, where the human. You have the human, and. Those three I join, uh, for example, no, for the, uh, for the human, for the homo sapiens, our nearest cousin, I could say that, uh, cousin, is the uh, chimpanzee, uh, I don't know in English, uh, the chimp. But it doesn't mean that we are 
coming from the chief. It, what is mean is that we know that we have a common ancestor between the chimp and the homo sapiens. And with the uh, phylogenetic and uh, the DNA, there is a, a tool that which is called the uh, molecular clock, and it could give us an uh, idea of the w when in the past that common ancestor lived. For example, here, the common ancestor of human and chimp uh, was uh, 10 million years ago. But that common ancestor have also a cousin, which is the gorilla. And together, they have also a common ancestor. And if you go to the orangutan, um, it, and you have, we can date here, it's uh, 15 million years ago, and uh, so on. So as you see here, it's a kind of tree. And it's quite similar to what we have in, um, in genealogy because we work in genealogy with a family tree. So there is a, a, some tool, what's happened? Okay. So there is a, some tool which are used to study that kind of tree. Uh, for our concern, I come back to the protein. The protein that we are looking for here is the HFE protein, which is a high iron protein. FE is a chemical symbol for the iron. That protein is a string, as I told you, of 348 amino acids. And that protein is mainly located in the uh, cell membrane and is the function is to regulate the iron intake uh, transport in the blood cell, in the blood vessel, I'm sorry. So if we go further, you, here you have the sequence of the 348 amino acids, which are constitute the uh, HFE protein. Uh, in the left part, you have the string for a normal person. And on the left, on the right, you have the same string coming from a um, uh, a person who had the hereditary hemochromatosis. And if you look here, you see that you have at the 282 position, you have an amino acid. Uh, it's a C. Here you have all the 21 amino acids that uh, are used to constitute the human protein. And you have a, normally you have a cysteine, the C is go to the cysteine. And on the, a person who had the hereditary hemochromatosis, you have a T, uh, Y here, which correspond to the tyrosine. And it's the reason why that mutation is called C282Y, because the change is the cysteine at the position 282 is changed to a Y, which represents the tyrosine. So when you heard, now you, you, you know where that come from, that uh, notation of the mutation. I would say our mutation, uh, well, my mutation. So I told you also that 
the property of a protein comes from uh, its 3D dimension. Here you have a representation of the F HF E protein in 3D. So you see all the long string of 348 amino acid, which is full, fold up uh, in a very complex way. But uh, it's the, that complex uh, way of co uh, that complex configuration who give the property of the protein. Uh, I would pay attention to the yellow part here. You see the yellow part is where the mutation occur. In one, you have a, a string which is joined with another string by that yellow dot. It's being that at that place, there is a bridge between those, that part of the string and that one. And it's where the mutation occur. So if you change, that bridge is constituted by two molecules of, um, of the cysteine. But when we have one replaced by retirazine, what's happened is that bridge is broken and the both part separate apart and uh, make that the protein is not anymore functional. Also, where is the, that mutation? Uh, the mutation is located here, uh, you have, uh, on the chromosome number six. And uh, okay, we have, uh, uh, we have 23 pair of chromosomes. Uh, you see the pair and uh, here is the uh, sexual chromosome, the X and Y, which occur, uh, depend of you if you are a male or a female. Another term that it quite use is uh, what we call the allele. Uh, here I illustrate two kind of chromo uh, six uh, of the chromosome six, the R by pair. And what we call a gene is that part of the, the chromosome, but there is, as the chromosome R by pair, you have two copy of the same gene and we call each copy an allele. So you could have here, here you have a normal person which have uh, the um, dominant allele and here you have another person which each allele where the mutation so that person had the hereditary hemochromatosis. So in principle, in the population, there is three kind of people according to the uh, HFE uh, mutation. You have people which were any defect allele. You have people like myself and uh, people who had the hemochromatosis have both allele. And you have people which we call the heterozygote where they have just one allele. Those people don't have the hereditary hemochromatosis, but in some case, people wearing one allele could have uh, iron overload, but less than a person who wear the, the two uh, mutant allele. So it's transmit the, uh, from generation to generation. Uh, so if 
for example, if uh, we a couple who don't have any uh, mutation, all their children will be uh, okay. They won't have uh, the the hemochromatosis. They won't have also. Uh, they were not the carrier of the mutation, and uh, and the opposite. If two hemochromatosis person get children, all their children will have the hemochromatosis because they receive one allele from the mother and the other from the father, I'm sorry. And you have those two cases where you have a carrier who uh, made with a non-carrier. Uh, there are 50% of their that their children will be carrier and the other 50 will be normal. And if, for example, a carrier and a hemochromatosis person match together, now they have 50% as chance that their children have the hemochromatosis and 50% that they will carrier. So it's the way that the transmission from generation to generation. Uh, genealogy now. Uh, in genealogy, we work also with a kind of the, uh, a tree, a structure in a tree. And here you have an example of one uh, tree. By the way, it's my uh, family tree where I am here. My mother, my father, my mother, my grand uh, paternal grandfather, my paternal grandmother, and so on. So, if, for example, here, as I am uh, the hereditary hemochromatosis, it means that one of my allele come from my father and one allele come from my mother. As I told you, the, my parents die at very old age. So they, poor, they I'm not sure they, they don't have a, both a lily. So it means that my father who were, who had one a lily, that a lily come from my grandfather or my grandmother. And if my grandfather paternal grandfather have one allele, it means that my second grandparent uh, had transmitted to my grandfather. So, and we go up to that, in that tree uh, looking. So it's the way that I try to construct a tree uh, uh, with the, uh, an hemochromatosis pe uh, person. But we could also make the, uh, the reverse. For example, if I know that uh, a person, an ancestor had the hemochromatosis, it's mean that there is chance that uh, those children could have it and we could construct in the same way a, a kind of tree coming back to uh, coming from that ancestor. So uh, in a tree, the pro uh, one property that I that I use to study it is what we call a, a, co a common ancestor. Uh, here you have a kind of population with ten generation and. Uh, I indicate in black people who uh, wear at least one allele of uh, the mutation. So if you took, for example, if I compare that person with that one, uh, their common ancestor in his ear is the one, uh, their father or their mother is the earliest of those to people. If I compare that one with that one, 
the earliest common ancestor is here, is the grandfather. And if I compare that one with that one, the, the, um, the common ancestor, if you follow the, the link, you is that person. That person uh, is a carrier at least. It could be have the, it could have the hemochromatosis, but it could be just a carrier. But anyway, I work with the carrier or the heterozygote. And that person is related to another population here of carrier of the, the mutation. And they have a common ancestor. And I got to the, the most uh, old common ancestor. And we know up to the 10th generation, we are a good chance to know uh, the name of those people. So it's what the, the policy that I, I use. And if I try, for example, I try to find out the common ancestor of all those carrier here, there is just one, which is that guy. It may be the here we have not any more information about if it's the father of the mother, but we know that this uh, couple, one of them, at least one of the member of that couple had the uh, mutation. So in the phylogenetic, uh, we, they have, it's a very uh, uh, special uh, part of the biology. Uh, they use a tree pencil to analyze a tree like that. And the phylogenetic is, to be simplified, is the study of a tree structure. It could be, as I told you, uh, an evolution structure, but it could be those, those same tool in the same principle could be used for a family tree. So uh, one uh, of the first principle, which is uh, often used, is what we call the Horkheim's razor. What is the Horkheim razor? It's a principle that uh, a monk in the um, in the Middle Age who stayed, uh, and they, he stated that the simple explanation that you have for uh, for a kind of network, like a tree, uh, is probably one of the best explanation that you have to explain uh, the situation. So uh, it's the same principle is used in evolution. Uh, when I saw, for example, uh, if I refer to the uh, pre map tree that I showed earlier, uh, it's the simple, we don't have, we don't need to make a lot of complex uh, network to explain the evolution. Uh, there is another principle, which is look at the, that is called the maximum likelihood. The maximum likelihood is a, a statistical tool to compare a lot of three and find out which tree is the more probable in the statistical term and, uh, and the most probable it could be a simple one, but it's not necessarily the simple one. You could have more complex, a little bit more complex tree, which is the, have the highest probability to be true. And the third one, it's another, uh, it's a uh, brief uh, I'm sorry, Presbyterian ministry, Tom's by, and Tom by, uh, Thomas by, uh, develop a tool which is a, a, simulate, a simulation tool. 
with uh, statistical analysis, which permit to find out which of all the theoretical tree that you could have match what we, you observe as a tree. So up to now, I would say that uh, you use just the, the principal, the parsimony tool because uh, two things. I think that I don't have yet enough, uh, enough data to make use of those, uh, the, the, those two tools here. And the other thing is that uh, it will ask me to, uh, to make more uh, study in uh, those uh, statistical tools because uh, it's a quite, uh, quite complex tool to use. But I have few idea about how they work because I use it in my works as a biologist. So my main task when I look at the tree, a family tree, is to find out common ancestor. Here you have an example. For example, I have a person here which is at least a carrier. It could be a, 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 an homozygote with the mutation but at least it's a carrier. And I compare, I have two here, I compare two in that tree, I compare two guy who had at least carrier. And I find out that, that in that tree, there is a, a, a name here of cure. Those two guy, A and B, I called it A and B, had the, those three common ancestors at that level. And if I compare this one of them, the A with another one, the C, here I find out the three which link the four uh, common ancestor. And if I compare A with another one, I find out two. And if I join, Together, those three, I could find out one or more than one common ancestor, which are common to those four people. So what I did, uh, I, did I worked with a, a, a big database uh, where I have nearly 94,000 Link name. What I mean by uh, link name, it's those uh, people have a, a, a relationship with uh, another people in that database. In that database, I have 73 carrier of the mutation. And here is just to explain that if I had for constitute that uh, sampling. If I, uh, somebody like myself, for example, I had two allele of the mutation, it means that I it give me two persons to try to find a common ancestor because that one is a carrier and that one is a carrier. And for each of those 73 carrier, I made a family tree up. I tried to made up uh, at least to the 10th uh, the tenth generation. And at that level, a person had 124 uh, ancestor. Uh, most of them, I have uh, more than 10, but uh, it's my criteria that I uh, that I put to uh, to work with and so uh, for all my 73 carrier here 
the completeness because you if you have a if you pay attention to my uh, family tree, it's quite complete, but there is blank because we have no information anymore. So uh, the family tree that you see at 10 generation uh, is generally not complete to 100%, but that my mean completeness uh, of the family tree of those 73 people are around 81%. So it's a good uh, uh, a good tool to make the analysis of uh, the relationship. So my first hypothesis when I began that project in uh, about uh, 20 years ago is I assumed that a person who had high ferritin got the hemochromatosis. And uh, so I begin the study of my, and I find out that 64 of my 73 have at least one common ancestor. And the most funding ancestor, which using that sample, I found that uh, the main three common ancestors which occur the more uh, frequently among is Marie Boucher, who had two wives, and we have a descendant of those two wives. Another guy, which is called Gaspard Boucher, which probably related to uh, Marie Boucher, but we, it's not confirmed. They, probably ha have a relationship. They could be brother, but they could be cousin. Uh, we don't know the the general cast study doesn't know exactly the relationship that they have, but they are almost sure that they have related. And another couple is Guillaume Langlois. I will come back with that. Just for example, uh, uh, Marie Boucher, 75% of my sampling here is related to Marie Boucher, 40% uh, to Gaspar, and uh, almost 50 to Guillaume Langlois and Jeanne Millet. So if I come back on my 73, you will see that there is nine people who won't have a common ancestor or they won't have those three people as a common ancestor. So uh, I have set of those people on the nine, seven people are coming from the Acadian uh, part of the Eastern Canada. And Two of them, which are Acadian, come are related to one of the uh, Gaspar or Marie Boucher. So I find out that for the Acadian, I'm quite sure that there is a link with the Acadian because seven of my Acadian uh, candidate, uh, seven of my nine Acadian candidates are those as a common ancestor, one of those three ancestors. By the way, those ancestors are, pro, are uh, all uh, what we call the first arrivant or first colonized coming from the uh, European country. So that hypothesis was quite bad. There is uh, it's not very uh, soundful because there is a high probability that uh, uh, ferritin is related to the, the mutation. And I've been, there is two, two, uh, two aspect, uh, two uh, fact that uh, told me that first of all, 
uh, the professor, Dr. Bissot from France, uh, which gave the next uh, lecture, uh, told me that uh, there is a lot of, a good probability that it's occur that a uh, person have a high ferritin without have the mutation. And also in my uh, sampling uh, with research, we find out that I have two cases where two people are homozygous for the mutation, but they have not high ferritin. It means that in that, those cases is that the, it's happened that the gene doesn't express is uh, information to make up the protein, it's, it is blocked. So what's happened in that case is that the, um, they got, they had the mutation, but it did not express by the cell and uh, so they are unaffected by the mutation. It's a very complex, uh, uh, there is a lot of complex way that that could happen at the gene level. And also, uh, as I told you, we have, uh, I look at the number of descendants of uh, the Boucher, both Bou uh, the, for example, Marie Boucher in Quebec have 10 millions of descendants actually. It's an estimation that the uh, uh, generalists made uh, two years ago, I think. So it being that I will deal with a very high complex network, which I doesn't want to work. It's not that I doesn't want to work uh, to work with a high complex network. My, my computer doesn't want because it's too huge. So I narrow my uh, hypothesis and I work with the uh, people who are heterozygote confirm and um. On the 73 people that I got before the analysis, I find uh, evidence uh, or confirmation more that 24 of them have a specific test made, asked by their doctor, and who confirmed that they had the mutation. So I redo the uh, that sample and now my computer is willing to work and in my database he assess two and a half million of relationship he find out 1172 common ancestor of those 23 people and uh, yeah, i identify 343 couple which which are candidate to be to where uh, to had the, the uh, mutation so uh, here is two example is one here is a, a guy who is Carlos who, who had 10 children so I have a lot of, uh, I don't remember exactly by how many uh, people joined that common ancestor, but uh, most of the, um, most of the 23 people joined two of their children. I have another couple which appear in that analysis, which is the same that uh, I had when, when I had my uh, uh, my brow hypothesis. It's uh, Guillaume Langlois. Guillaume Langlois and his wife had three children. And on the three children, two of them are common ancestor in the, uh, the my sample of 23 people. And here I just, show you 
that case of uh, Guillaume Langua, you have here the three children of Guillaume Langua. And in red is the family tree, the descendant family tree of, uh, of Guillaume Langua. And in red, you have the common ancestor find out among my 23 people. So for example, uh, Marguerite Langlois had uh, seven, uh, two of them are common ancestor and each one, one have three children as a common ancestor and in that line, the three of them. So here I show you a, a test that I made. Uh, you have in red uh, one, I look at the tree of just one um, of my 23 candidates and how they are related to uh, Guillaume Langua, the same, uh, I'm sorry, that it's bothering me that taskbar. So you have Guillaume Langua. So you see that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven branch of the tree of that person who joined, could join Guillaume Lagua. So it means that that person could have received the mutation from seven different uh, line, uh, ancestor line. Oops. Okay, here is my own case. Uh, so it's the, uh, how the, in our family is uh, the, the mutation is distributed. I am here, here, younger than now. And uh, as I had uh, confirmation by analysis, uh, uh, DNA test that I have the two mutant allele. And as I told you, it's mean, okay, it's mean that my father had one allele and my brother two had one allele. My wife have been tested by my doctor and she doesn't have the uh, the mutation. So what it's mean is that I have three children. The three children are at least, I'm sure that all the children, my children are at least carrier. And my, uh, because my wife doesn't have the mutation and my girl have been tested by uh, her doctor and she was in fact a carrier. But the interesting thing is on my brother's side, my brother's side also is uh, homozygote recessive for the mutation. And as I told you, my sister-in-law uh, is a carrier. Uh, so it means that they have four children and Two of them have been tested. Uh, you have here one, uh, one of their children have been tested and he is just a carrier, but you have that children here who find out he had both mutation and he was diagnosed at, uh, I think at the age of 28. So uh, it's one, uh, one of his benefits is now uh, treated uh, for the uh, for the hereditary hemochromatosis, and he got that information in uh, quite earlier in his life, so he won't have any problem in the future. And what is interesting in that case is that uh, as uh, my uh, uh, ear. We are unsure of the parent of my sister-in-law, which status they have. So there is a, I come 
to my uh, uh, the other approach, my DNA approach. My DNA approach is based on the uh, what we now call the genetic genealogy through the DNA analysis for uh, for genealogy. There is a two benefit of that. First of all, it's uh, the main one is that it will eliminate the adoption case because we have to realize when I we construct a genealogical tree based on the documentation uh, or the registry and so on, you could have adoption or so some other events which in which the the parent are not the biological parent. So I know that it's happened. It's a kind of error that could happen in my analysis. But with that tool, we are sure of the biological parent. And also it give us, it give me a larger sample pool because uh, many people in the United States and some other country made the analysis in one of the, the few company who did the analysis and uh, it's gave us a more large or different approach. And what I did for that is I'm using the, um, the sampling that I, I use here, it's independent of that previous one. And it's based on the segment of the DNA, which carry the HFE gene. And for that, I had to work with the recessive homozygote people. If a people who had the hemochromatosis is uh, made in DNA analysis by uh, some of the company who did that for the uh, non-medical uh, purposes, uh, you remember the the H HFE uh, gene is located on the chromosome C. You have the pair here. And if we go further, here is a, a, a picture of the, um, of the uh, color chrom chromosome, uh, the uh, chromosome six, and it's located, the, they are designated some part of that chromosome, dependent of the kind of coloration they, they add. And the HFE, uh, code of the DNA is on that part, which is called P2.2 uh, section. And if we have a, a sequence of all the six chromosomes, uh, I will go there, okay. So the chromosome six, you remember when I spoke about the ETGC letter of the DNA. The chromosome six have 170 million of letter. And the part that I show you in the picture is the small red line that you see here. And if we zoom on that small part, you will find out all the instruction to make the HFE genes working. Uh, and in that gene, there is 11,000 DNA letter. And we can, with a complete sequence of the DNA, we can have all those letter here, which are the instruction. And if we zoom it, you see here 
all the letter, uh, part of all the letter where the mutation occur. And uh, in a few minutes. Okay, I don't need that. So you have here a part of the sequence of the HFE genes and on a normal per a person and a person who had the mutation. And if you look, the different, they are exactly the same, except here, that letter. Oops, I'm sorry, but a G is, uh, Okay, so you see a G here have been changed to a C caused by the mutation. And it's just one letter in our genetic code is responsible for the hereditary hemochromatosis. And uh, almost all the, the testing company for uh, non-medical uh, analysis give us uh, a tool to compare the chromosome. And what I did, here you have a picture of a chromosome browser, which uh, compare one, person here who were the uh, hemochromatosis. He had both allele. And here you have a member of my family because I did some uh, on my family, some gen uh, genetical analysis by uh, the, those company. And you see, here, my brother, and how the chromosome uh, a representation of my brother. Uh, what it's mean the color when the color is uh, in the um, in the chromosome representation. It means that that segment here is the same that 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 person. So as a matter of fact, that one is one of the one of children of my, uh, my brother. So you see that there is a lot of people who wear the same part of the gene. We had at least one copy of the, uh, the mutation. And what is interesting, if you look at my sister-in-law, who is here, and we have an analysis of her father. We see that the father, her father doesn't share that segment of the F H F F E gene. So it means that my sister-in-law, who, who were, uh, who is a carrier, the mutation doesn't come from his father, but come on the his mother's side. So it's a tool that could help us to go further. And there here, when I made the analysis, here I find out two other people, one coming from United States, the other one come from uh, Ontario, where we share the same part of the gene. So it means that those two people had at least one copy of uh, the mutation for the hemochromatosis. And uh, by the way, uh, I did that 
uh, when you you made a test with uh, such a company, uh, you, they give you uh, all the cousin that you where you have a significant match of your DNA. Uh, for example, myself, I have over 4,050 uh, uh, DNA cousin. And I, among them, uh, I find out that I have almost 250 where I share part of the, 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 the sharing part is located on the chromosome six. And I found out 12 people where that part of chromosome six I am sharing uh, are located at the position of the, of the gene. So it means that those people are surely, almost surely, a carrier of the mutation. So I did the same, the same exercise with my own family, where you uh, see here uh, in blue the, um, the status of the gene, the uh, HFE gene in blue. It's uh, where there is a, a, the, the mutation and in the red is where they don't have a mutation. So it's here that we find out that the parent of my sister-in-law, that she got a normal allele from his father and the uh, mutant allele come from his mother but we don't know the status of the other elderly. So here we can we know that my sister-in-law get is a mutation from his mother. And as my parent, uh, her mother died uh, at quite old age, so probably she has, uh, she was just a carrier, but it indicates that I have not anymore to look at the paternal uh, side of my sister-in-law to find a link, but I should look at his maternal side. So uh, just to be finished, uh, as I told you, it's a work in progress. I have a lot of uh, idea to work with. I don't know if I will have the times to uh, do how, but uh, first of all, I would like to increase my uh, candi uh, candidate uh, a carrier of the uh, mutation. Um, and uh, I am interested to find out more people which had carrier, which are carrier are on are are, uh, are uh, are uh, homozygote recessive for the mutation, who had an uh, analysis by uh, for the genealogical purposes. Uh, uh, I have to analyze. Uh, those match for uh, also uh, one aspect I could look at the uh, how in the history and the migration of movement of carrier of the uh, of the of the mutation. I could also uh, look at the uh, longevity analysis by, because. Uh, when a people die at very old age, we are quite sure or good probability that that person uh, won't have both allele, mutant allele. And uh, I have to make a test, a, genealogical, uh, a genetic test, uh, which, uh, uh, which indicate that I have enough 
a representative tree to uh, go further to develop those uh, statistical analysis that I spoke earlier. And recently, uh, I'm, as I learned to read the DNA sequence, uh, I found out that it could be it could be interesting to see how that gene, uh, the evolution bring that gene, the HFE gene. Uh, by the way, I will conclude with that. There is one kind of bird which suffer from iron, iron overload. Uh, it's uh, the bird that uh, probably most of you know it. It's the toucan, the toucan is uh, suffer, but well, it's not, not suffer, but the uh, compared to other birds have a uh, high load of iron in their liver. So I finish with that and I will look at the question. Great, uh, thank you so much, Pierre. So does anyone have questions for Pierre? Diana noticed, noticed, noted that she has both Jean Guyon and Abraham Dugas in her family trees on the Acadian side. There's a question wanting to be asked by C.H. Laporte. She's waving at the screen. Oh, okay. oh I think so. Okay. I think she needs to be unmuted. She can unmute herself if she like as well. Sure, sorry, I can't see everybody. So let me see, C.H.S. Laporte. Yeah. She's... Let me figure that out. Okay, C.H.S. Laporte asked to unmute. Oops. Can we just ask a question out loud or do, are we in sequence? Yeah. No, go ahead, Joan. Go ahead. I, I found it very fascinating because I too am Acadian and from the Gaspé on my French side. And I was just doing a little bit of research in the family tree and both the Bernards and the Leblancs came in 16, eight, sorry, 1666 to La Nouvelle France, New France. So, and, and uh, it's interesting because on my father's side, it's Irish, which is Celtic. So I get it from both sides. And I'm just, I was reading just in my own family tree, how the, these founding families just ha had a lot of children and they married just who was available of other founding families, obviously carriers, many of them. So hence, that's how the, the mix got done as Pierre so nicely put in his tree. You know, you can see how that happened because there were just so many people that intermarried. And if I just look at my grandfather's siblings, you find all the famous French Canadian names of founding families you know, just the people they married. So you can see how it easily transferred from one family to another. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I, I could add to that, uh, I, uh, I have a look at uh, some of my DNA cousin that uh, I uh, made a match. Uh, yeah. A lot of them, I don't finish yet because I have a, I think four or five three to look at yeah. of people coming from uh, United States, for example. And each time I find out at least one branch related to the, uh, to the French Canadian. Yeah, those are the deported Acadians that became Cajuns. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I see that Bev has a question and I'll just also in the chat, Charles said, if I have both mutations, does that mean that both my birth parents would have had at least one mutation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
Yes, because you, if you had two, uh, the two mutation, one come from your dad and the other come from your uh, mom. Yeah. Okay, and another. And it's, it's the same as me. Uh, you are in the same situation as me, so it's mean that one of your uh, paternal grandfather, a grandparent, and one of your maternal grandparents uh, was a carrier. Okay. and so on yeah so you could do the exercise and uh, or if you wish i if you are interested to uh, be part of my project uh, uh, i will be willing to do the job for you i would be yeah yeah so okay. uh, please uh, uh, contact the uh, the um, the uh, Canadian Hemochromatosis Society, and uh, they will give uh, me your contact. I, I will contact you. What I need it's not a lot. I have few questions uh, to ask, and uh, what I did is uh, when a, a person wants to be part of that project. Uh, what I did uh, is that uh, I, first of all, tried to link his family tree to my database. Mm -hmm. Almost all time I succeed. I, uh, I find maybe one or two cases that per person who contact me and I was able to, to, uh, uh, unable to uh, make a link with my database. It's very rare. Recently, I have a new candidate, and uh, in about uh, 10 minutes of work, I made the connection. Okay. Um, maybe, Pierre, can you stop sharing your screen? Then I can see more of the people. But I, I do see that Bev has a question. So, Bev, do you want to ask your question? Sure. Thank you. Um, my ancestry is 100% UK, um, no French, and um, I have hemochromatosis, and so I, I got it from each one of my parents being a carrier. And um, so, do you have a project at Family Tree DNA just for hemochro hemochromatosis carriers? Or is it just um, you have to be linked to your family tree network or? or? Uh, no, I don't have a family tree project. By the way, it's, uh, if you have a DNA analysis by FTA DNA, it's the same company where I, I am, uh, I've, I've made my test. It's uh, one of the best company. Uh, I think uh, to uh, to make the analysis. Uh, the main reason uh, it could be a future project. The main reason is that it's a quite time-consuming because I have a, a, a friend of me who had uh, managed a group like that, and uh, it's a lot of work. So, but it's a could be a, a possibility. Okay, uh, I'm. I'm also, very interested. I'm very interested in collaborating because I'm a professional genealogist. So I have my DNA on all the databases, and uh, I do like family tree DNA, of course. Okay, so it's uh, interesting. Uh, so that's great. I can connect the, the two of you. Yeah, that's great, Bev. <clears throat> okay, CJ. Oh, sorry, CJC has a, a comment question here. Do you have any comments about those who carry the H63D mutation? <laughs> in Atlantic Canada, uh, hereditary hemochromatosis is also common in Yorkshire settlers and also those with Celtic ancestry. Yeah. Yes, yes I have uh, nine, uh, nine people coming from uh, New Brunswick. Nova Scotia. 
Can I add to that a little piece of history? I sure. found this, my aunt found this from the Quebec Info Bureau in Munich. And it was about German ancestors. Um, some of you in English may know about the Hessian troops that come from the, the old province of Hesse, yeah. Germany. And in fact, they were mercenaries that sold their services to both the British army and the French army. And in fact, spread themselves out throughout England and France. My particular family who is Bernard, uh, you know, they suggest here that a lot of these German names uh, turned into French Canadian names because those people stayed, the soldiers stayed and married French women. And so names like Daigle was really the, the German Daima or Dengue, and Dallaire was Dollar, and Meyer was Maher, and my name, Bernard, was Bernhardt. So that's just a little piece of history that explains how there is movement of other nationalities intermarrying and, you know, living elsewhere that then came to Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's funny that you 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 mentioned that because uh, last week I heard about uh, a guy who his name is Otto Laporte. <laughs> it's a German guy. It's a, a high physician uh, dealing with uh, uh, spectroscopy and uh, quantum physics, he died in 1973. I tried to join to look at it. Uh, I know that his ancestor come from uh, France, but migrate very earlier when the, uh, the uh, you know, the persecution of uh, the Huguenot in France. Mm -hmm. but they, they quit, they leave the France yeah. To the, uh, the at that time what the, the what they call the Prussian country, yeah. and after that they were merged with the Germany. The he lived there, migrated. When he got his specialty, he migrated uh, uh, one university in New York. I don't remember the name. And also, uh, I have a friend of me, which is the first assessor, is a missioner. And it came here and after the the end of his job so in the United States uh, was coming in Montreal and uh, was looking for a job. His father was a doctor at the uh, Prussian uh, country mm -hmm. and he had some nations. So they give him a permit to uh, to practice the mixing here and they ship them in uh, the, I would call that uh, Bodsfeuf in the Saint Anne de la Pocatière, yeah. where he works there. And uh, this name is the first, and every people bearing his uh, patronym are joined to that guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So there was a question too, um, is the gene recessive? Yes, the gene is recessive. It means that if you have one mutant allele and one normal allele, you won't have the hemochromatosis. You won't have a sign or so or symptom of hemochromatosis. Okay. Um, but and we have. If we, get, if we get informed about our status earlier in our life, we don't have any any problem. Okay. And sorry, just a clarification on the question, do you have any comments about those who carry the H63D mutation? Uh, what kind of comment about? 
Um, do you want to clarify that? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, CJC. So that's a question. normally normally there is no any consequence that you are a carrier except that you propagate that you if you have children you propagate that mutation but i should see mention one thing it's not necessarily a bad thing to have that mutation we have some advantage to it so if uh, for example uh, one theory of the um, uh, by molecular uh, uh, the molecular uh, clock that we have uh, they find that the, that mutation appear around uh, year 80. Uh, 800 years ago. No, around 80 years. And it's coming from Viking. But you know, uh, there is a lot of battle there. You lose a lot of uh, blood in those battles. Uh, and you got more chance to uh, to uh, heal from your uh, your uh, wounds, and it's probably one uh, evolutionary advantage of that mutation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I think that. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody suggests me that um, it could be true, but uh, people with uh, hemochromatosis had a better performance as a runner. And my brother is a big runner. Darren's a big runner too, marathon runner. Uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, I've done 18 marathons, three of them being 50K ultra marathons, and I felt that it helped me a lot when it was a little bit high, but not too high, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> iron content. I know about that. My brother is online. It could be uh, make uh, a comment about that. So, France, you're muted, if you can yeah. unmute. Yeah, France, you're, France? Unmute. you're mute. France, can you France? unmute? S'il vous plaît. Simon. Hello. Okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead, okay. France. I am ultra marathon. Okay, I'm ultra marathon. Marathon. Then I can. I have run uh, something like 24 hours in a row and a uh, few times, and uh, that's uh, <laughs> my kind of stuff. And, uh, and I, I run every day, by the way. That's so why. When I say every day, it's every day since nearly 47 years then. I am, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, get, cause, uh, becoming to, I, uh, I started to come uh, to have bad knees, but anyway, if I am mm -hmm. still running <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah, I think it helps carry the oxygen, extra iron in your blood kind of helps carry the oxygen in your blood is what my theory is, but... <laughs> Yes, my doctor want. I, I have. Uh, I had some blood. Uh, now giving some blood a few years ago. Now I stopped that, and uh, I don't know why. I had uh, because I have uh, the two weeks, as my brother explained you, and I have no problem now. My uh, iron level is quite normal. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why it was so bad a few years ago. Now it's okay. Maybe it's about my running every day. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Very good. Um, yeah, I don't know. CJC, I don't know if your questions have been answered now, just about the H6 3D. And I, I guess maybe the question too is just about how, um, what's the difference between C282Y and the H6 3D mutations, maybe? Uh, I am not. Uh... I didn't look at the uh, HD63. Uh, what I uh, read is uh, most of the, the gene, uh, maybe that gene maybe increase 
the um, the uh, the effect of the mutation, the C two eighty two Y mutation. But uh, if you add just the H D sixty three, you have you are not considered as an uh, hereditary hemochromatosis and it's, I don't think that uh, it's uh, a major causes of uh, condition as the iron overload. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just for reference, I have one of each gene. So I don't know, France, if you have one of each gene as well. The 282 and the H63, I have one of each. <laughs> uh, myself, I don't have it, uh, but uh, I know that uh, a person who had it, and uh, but he, he is uh, uh, almost he got a recessive, so. Okay, um, another question from the chat is, do you know of a company working on a DNA solution to hemochromatosis? No. And I could put my opinion. It doesn't, I don't think it's worth to try to uh, modify that. It's a part, it's a personal point of view, but it's a part of the evo evolution uh, and we have to deal with that. Okay. So the, the, the only thing I could say, have you checked, if you know that you are a carrier or uh, somebody is here, it could be harmful to have checked that. Uh, now I think that most of the doctor uh, have no problem to, uh, to add uh, a specific DNA analysis for the mutation. I know that when I, uh, 20 years ago, it's uh, quite uh, difficult, uh, but, uh, and my doctor uh, request um, a biopsy of the liver instead of DNA analysis, because he told me that it could be take uh, three months before to get the result and the biopsy, it took me uh, two days. Mm -hmm. So, but now it's quite, you, uh, what I understand that, that most of the doctor uh, are, are more familiar with that and they ask uh, the specific tests. Okay, that's great. So, um, Right now I have uh, Joan and Bev who will want to connect with uh, Pierre after so I can connect you there. If there's anyone else, just reach out to me and I'll also include you. Um, are there any other questions for tonight? Could, could you repeat, Pierre, the DNA analysis you got it with which company? Uh, it's a FT, FT DNA or family tree DNA. Family tree DNA. Yeah. It's one. Uh, it's one of them who had the facility to had uh, compare uh, chromosome. Uh, if you if you go to ancestry, ancestry doesn't allow a chromosome comparison. Okay. 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 Great. Um, one upcoming session. I don't have a date yet, but on um <clears throat> my journey this summer on the 40th anniversary road trip, I met a genetic counselor, and she's interested in doing a genetic session for us as well. So, um, some of you might be interested in that one. Um, of course, we also have um, Professor Pierre Brousseau. Um, on November 25th. And um, Pierre, we just want to thank you so much for thank sharing you. all of your thank work. You. Um, yeah, thank you so much for 
uh, being a member and for sharing your work and your passion for um, genealogy. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, thank you so much, everybody, for coming.